Welcome, Welcome to, to CNS, CNS Lifestyle. So this is a video about PCOS, which is also known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. So PCOS is very common in women, especially in overweight women. That tends to be a big thing. You'll notice a lot of things, a hump on the neck, like the back of the neck. Uh, a couple of my friends have it. You can tell a lot of people have it more obvious than other people, but that is one of the signs. Another sign is hair growth. So I get a lot of excess hair on my face and that is one of the one of the main things that I notice on other women is if they have excess hair growth, it's an immediate sign to me that PCOS is a likely culprit. It's very difficult. It is not a fun I guess it would be a disease. It's definitely not a fun disease, if any disease is fun, but... It's not the easiest to talk about. It's definitely not the easiest to talk about, and it's not the easiest to have. So, it basically is the male hormones that you have in your system. It pumps more male hormones than it does, than it's supposed to, than an average woman does. And that's basically... So you get more testosterone than an average woman should. That's the main issue. So that includes cysts on the ovaries, which I have, which is really tough. They can pop, they can cause excess bleeding, not enough bleeding. People can't have babies because of it. It makes you infertile. Even IVF doesn't always work because of it. It's definitely a difficult syndrome to have for many reasons. For me in particular, the weight gain, the mood swings, and the excess hair are the three most difficult for me. I've always been overweight. That's not something I hide. When I first thought I was overweight, looking back now, I wish I was that size because I wasn't really that overweight. I was just bigger than most kids my age. The mood swings are pretty bad. A lot of a lot of mood swings. I mean, I used to have really bad anger issues before I came out. So that was just an internal battle that I was dealing with. But you definitely have a lot of mental disorders that you seem to have to fight with. I notice a lot of people have a depression issue, bipolar, anxiety, things like that. I've, I've known a lot of people who have it and it seems to be a common trend. Anxiety seems to be a big one. I have bipolar, which is not easy to handle at all. OCD, anxiety, just a whole bundle of joy. The excess hair to me is the most difficult to deal with and the most difficult to accept. I've always hated it. I've tried everything. In college, I would get waxed like every week, every other week. My mom was sending me money to do it. She even had her credit card on file at a place because it was just getting to the point where I couldn't keep up with it. I would bleach it, which is horrible. I don't recommend that to anybody. It hurts, it smells, it was horrible. And it's tough growing up with it, especially in college when you're trying to live a life and you don't wanna be in any photos. You don't wanna really talk to anybody outside of your circle because you're afraid of the judgment or the jokes or anything like that. That was the toughest for me. Even now I'm 34 years old and I, I struggle with it. If I don't stay on top of it, it grows a little bit and I get super anxious, super self-conscious. I cut my hair short just because I wanted short hair and having that excess hair on my face and my short hair. People think I'm a guy, so I get very bad looks when I walk into the restroom. I get comments once they realize I'm a woman. It's just, it's tough. It's something that I've dealt with for 15 years or so, and it's just been really, really bad. Right now, I, I don't wax it. I use like the little as seen on TV things just because waxing to me hurts so bad and it's not worth the pain. They say pain is beauty, but 
the price and the pain isn't worth it to me. I used to break out all the time. I'm allergic to some of the stuff. The aloe. Yeah, the aloe. I'm not allergic to aloe any other time except after getting waxed. Yeah. And it's, it's not fun. It's not a fun experience. It's not fun to live and feel ashamed all the time. Especially like when Silky and I met, I was super self-conscious about it. With my anxiety and everything, it gets overwhelming. I had the issue where with PCOS, you either have a really bad menstrual period or you don't have one at all. Growing up, I was lucky to have one every three or four months. And that was great. College, that was great. Like, couldn't have asked for a better time. I paid for that recently. The end of last year. I yeah, yeah, I had a menstrual period for six months straight. And it was every day, all day. There'd be smaller days or like days where it wasn't as bad, but it was wreaking havoc on my mental health, my emotional health, just my health in general. I was anemic. I was having all these issues. I turned gray and I just couldn't handle it anymore. I got to the point where I cried. I had my mom come because I just couldn't deal with it. It got to the point where my mom had to walk into a doctor's appointment with me for a doctor to actually sit down and acknowledge what I was saying and to realize the extent of how bad my issue was. I'm 34 years old and I needed my mother to show up in order for somebody to listen to me. So that was tough. And it's not something, so I live in shame just because of the facial hair, because I, I work for a very big company here and it's all guest interaction. It's all facing, facing guests. And that's tough because I'll get called sir. People have asked me if my name means anything because I'm a girl or I'm a boy with a girl's name. So that's really tough for me to be like, no, I'm a girl with a girl's name. I just don't really look like a girl, like I get it. So I get dirty looks in the locker rooms at work. Getting clothes or getting like costumes at work has been really tough. At a place I used to work at, people used to try and kick me out of the girls locker room and it happened a couple times and I would pick up costumes and costume and cast would say, oh, this is for a girl. I had to explain my situation there. Um, so it's frustrating and it's annoying. And I'm ashamed about the way I look sometimes, but I know a lot of people who have PCOS have it worse than I do. So I think that's something I have to continue to work on is knowing that I'm one of the lucky ones that I'm not trying to have a child. So I don't have to go through that emotional point or that emotional experience of trying and not being able to, or trying and not being able to like have the baby. So I know there's people who are worse than me or who have many of the other multitudes of issues that PCOS can give you. And for people who have PCOS, I know it's tough. And I know we all have our own sets of issues, but if we can listen to someone who has it or just be on the same side, that would help. Like keeping the comments to yourself that you know somebody might be struggling with. I know people who I've talked to, I can tell right away who have PCOS. Like I said, because of the hump on the back of the neck or because of the hair, but I'm not gonna open up and say, hey, do you have PCOS? It's more of a, like a slap in the face yeah and it's more of like one of those things where I've gotten to talking to people like when I did get waxed or when like I'll get really close to someone and we'll become friends and like I'll make a comment about my facial hair and just like kind of like cover it up and then I explain to them I have PCOS and nine out of ten times they're like oh I have that too I know somebody who has that it's starting now to finally be a normalized thing where I can go into a doctor's office and say I have PCOS and instead of them saying, what's that? It's more of like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what that is. Cause that's one of the toughest things too, is 
telling a doctor what you have and the doctor not knowing what it is. So then you have to try and explain it. Like, I'm not a doctor. Like, I can show you a Wikipedia website that tells you what it is, um, but I oh, can't yeah. tell you... Sorry. But I can't tell you specifics. Olivia, stop it. So, like, getting medication, talking to a pharmacist, it's becoming more normalized where I can say I have PCOS and they're like, okay, well, in that case, don't take this, don't take that. Or, oh yeah, I know somebody else that has that that's very common in people your age. So it's getting a more of a normalized thing, which is helpful. Because you walk into a doctor's office and you say, I have PCOS, I have migraines, I have this, that, and the other. And instead of asking about, you know, the really important ones, it's, what's PCOS? Tell me about that. Like, how am I supposed to tell you about it? Okay, well, why am I here? Yeah. And it definitely, PCOS definitely had an effect on my migraines. So once I got last year taken care of and the six months were finished, and it wasn't finished because it just ended, it was finished due to a medical procedure, it finally finished. Mm -hmm. And once that was done, my mental health came back, my migraines stopped, I was getting migraines almost every day. I was waking up in the morning, my anger got pretty much under control, I still have moments where my mood swings are crazy, but everything started to come into effect and it took, god, it took like months, six months, easy for me to finally get back to a place where I felt comfortable in my body. Can I tell you guys what the medical procedure was? Yeah. And I actually, I have it too, I don't have PCOS but um, Marina. So it's an IUD and it literally, I have it for other reasons, but it literally fixed a lot of things for her. Probably if I kept going the way it was going, I was so anemic that I probably would have needed a transfusion. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what, what the, the doctor, doctor said. said. So, so it's, it's rough and I warned Silky about it from the beginning like, this is my issue, this is why I'm self-conscious, this is what we have to deal with, and that didn't turn her away, so. Seven years later. I mean, literally, we'll, if we're somewhere and we go to the bathroom, she's behind me and I don't want her to be ashamed of herself. Because you shouldn't be, you know? Yeah. And. But if she's going to the bathroom and I know I have to go to the bathroom, I go in with her. So if anybody makes comments, I know I have somebody on my side. Like I've had points where even employees at a theme park would say, oh, this is the girl's room. Like I know, I'm very much aware. You think I want to wait in line to use the bathroom when I could turn around if I was a dude <laughs> and just walk in? Right. Like I'm not waiting in line for no reason. <laughs> like I would much rather not wait in line, but I mean, this is what God blessed me with and this is something I have to deal with. So I think that's the toughest part is, I think it's the restroom thing to me. Yeah. It's the toughest. But like, when, when they decide to bully you, trust me. Y'all think y'all haven't seen the black and silk yet? Oh, you're going to see the black and silk yet <laughs> if you dare mess with her. Yeah. I have a, somebody on my side and when friends are with me, if they're going to the bathroom, I jump with them too and I explain why. Because I just need somebody there that's on my side. Sometimes even the people in the bathroom recognize that I'm a woman and say, no, 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 like she's good. So like, but I, I see the stares, I see the looks I get. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver's peeing Sorry. the litters right here. And Our Oliver's cat, peeing. Yeah, he just decided to pee. So. Um, <laughs> but I see the stairs even when I get out of the bathroom. So, and like I said, I've been kicked out of many a locker room when I worked in theme park. So, I, I know, I know what it's like. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have it tougher than I do. Like, a lot of transgender people have it tougher than I do. And that's not taking anything away from them. I'm just saying we all have our moments and we all have 
the strength to do it and sometimes we don't sometimes you have to hold going to the bathroom for a long period of time because you don't have the emotional or mental capacity at that moment to deal with the stupidity so yeah you know what i'm proud of you thank you because i thought i i threw the challenge for you to talk about this because there's more people out there that are ashamed of something that they can't control and it's okay like it's not like you have a light switch that you can just shut off mm -hmm. you know and i think it's more acceptable like when i had long hair so in the beginning of the vlogs when i had long hair i could walk into a restroom and nobody would second guess because i had long hair but nowadays it's and i knew going into it i knew cutting my hair going into it because this is i mean i've had my hair short for like a decade before this so like i knew cutting my hair short would introduce this all over again but i needed my hair cut short i just couldn't deal with it so that was something that i had to take on and i knew i was taking on but even with the masks like that doesn't help <laughs> like you would think a mask people wouldn't even second guess you would just walk in they're always saying sir yep so and it's not like i don't have a big chest like that's pretty obvious and there's been times where i'm i'm ashamed to say but i mean i think we've all hit that point where i've gotten to the point where i fought back and i've said to people i'm a woman i can show you i'm a woman i mean that's what i'm all done y'all want to see if it's a little kid it's like it's whatever i i mean if it's a little kid and they say something to me directly, I'll say, no, I'm a girl. If it, they say something to their parents, I just look at their parents because I want them to know like, hey, I'm in the right bathroom or hey, like I'm a girl, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight a child. But if people make comments and they have a child, that's when I have to question, is it worth saying anything back to you? Or is it worth just me being quiet? And that's, definitely happened a few times um, people will walk into a bathroom look at me look at the sign look at me again and either walk out or just walk in and not think anything of it so there's times like that where I'm just not in the mood and I'm like I'm a girl like I belong in here and they'll go oh I'm really sorry I'm really sorry and it's like no I just stop jumping to conclusions like know that I'm in the right bathroom I'm not stupid like I'm not here to harm anyone or anything like I just want to pee like everybody else and just let me do my thing so I think that's that's about it PCOS is a real thing and it's a pain in the ass but I don't have any other option be you let's be honest mm -hmm. Well, you guys, I think that was a good vlog. If you have any questions, like any dire questions about that you've me always, personally. That you've always wanted to know about Caitlin. This is the best opportunity. Yeah. It, can, it doesn't have to be about PCOS. It can be about anything. Right now is the time to ask since I'm feeling open and honest. She's literally, like, she's not usually vulnerable. I mean, I see it all the time, but y'all don't see it, so there's that. But I'm not a doctor, so if you have PCOS, you think you have it, see a doctor. You can Google the symptoms, you can Google the signs, but yeah, definitely check in with a doctor if you think you have it. You can also Google what it is if you want more specific scientific information about it. Wikipedia is pretty good on it. All right, well... Until next time. This girl. Okay, good enough. Are you just gonna stare at me the whole time? <laughs> Stop staring at me. This is a good exit to your vlog. She said my vlog like it was just by myself.